Hello and welcome to another episode of the Release Day Series podcast. Joining me today is a man with a really great name, Alex Southey. <laughs> okay. Uh, Alex, thanks so much for, for joining me today, man. How you been? Good. Thank you. That's so funny. I, I've, I've never disliked my name or anything, but I remember growing up in school, people thought it was French, so I'd get like Soute on the announcements. Oh, really? Like yeah. So it's so it's amusing to hear someone think that it's cool. Oh yeah, uh, well, I just say it because my name's Alex, your name's Alex. Oh, and, I, of, and, uh, course, of course, of course. We've got that. It's funny that you mention it. Uh, people thinking it's French because my last name mm-hmm. is French, but I'm not French, and ah. so, so everybody, you know, they'll is that you are Mike Teward? <laughs> no, the Teward. Just pretty simple. That's great. Um, so, uh, Alex, thanks for thanks again, man. Uh, so you sure. recently released your third album Mm -hmm. which is pretty incredible in itself so congratulations on that as an indie artist man um and the country stirred i put this album on when i was driving up back roads to my brother-in-law's place and that's perfect it really is man so like (laughs) can you i'd love to start just understanding how you got to where you are as a musician where did it all start for you when it came to writing and you know picking up the guitar and and putting your thoughts into the musical world? Um, Yeah, well, I began playing guitar at like 12 and then hated it because I was learning classical. So it just didn't interest me very much. And then I somehow talked my parents into somehow getting me a guitar again when I was maybe 14. And then it was around the time some of my other friends also started playing. So you feed off that energy. And I remember one friend and I learned a lot of Sam Roberts shout out to another Canadian uh, artist but yeah we that's what we grew up kind of it was around the time that brother down and all that was super popular uh so you know we learned that kind of stuff on the guitar but anyway when I started actually I probably started songwriting or trying to songwrite pretty early on uh ha- however a lot of my high school was dominated High school experience was dominated by me going on ultimate guitar tabs and learning as close to Jimmy Page solos as I could. Amen. Uh, uh, yeah. yeah, I feel that, man. That was me too. That was me as well. Just like yeah. reading. Could that. I have gone to a party? Yeah, I probably should have. Uh, but uh, instead, I stayed at home and tried to play along and improvise around Radiohead stuff and Zeppelin stuff and whatever. Um, and then I guess I kind of put it away for a little while in university, so to speak, because I started focusing on film a little more. And I just found myself back in it around 24. And I was just in a bad mental place a little bit and just thinking basically, this is something you've had an interest in the back of your mind and many times at the fore of your mind uh, for so long. The only thing worse than doing it is not doing it. So finally I just got up and... um, I think I benefited a little bit from being older than some people who start out in open mics. Like some people will be 18 or 19 and they've got, they're, not, they're less sure of themselves, let alone themselves as artists. And I had the benefit of, you know, it's not like you're fully formed by 25, but it's very different than 19. And I just was able to step into the scene confidently immediately. Um, and I was also writing a lot, which helped so it just all kind of worked together to spur on three albums. What kind of what kind of headspace had you been in when it came to writing those three? Was it generally the sort of the same type of headspace that has led to the creation and, and to the writing process? Uh, that's an interesting question. No, I don't think so. The first album was definitely a, a very much like, first of all, I barely knew how to use recording software. I used GarageBand. And I didn't even understand what compression was and all this stuff. And it was, it's, if you go listen to it, I'm not embarrassed by the songs, but I am embarrassed by the production. Um, and so that I came at it from a very amateur point of view, but you can kind of get away with that with lo-fi acoustic anyway, if that's your thing. Um, and again, I was confident in the songs, so that also helped. But I... Yeah, how do you get the headspace? Then was I was still pretty like depressed in a in a bad place just because I 
uh, it was attached to many things but mm -hmm. anyway yeah uh, did, did that help did it help you it was as an outlet i mean i know it helps many musicians and yeah i would say it did off. I would yeah. say it did, but it's not like I only use music for when I'm feeling upset or something. Mm -hmm. I, I, it's much, it has a, it's less narrow than that. Yeah. You know? Uh, so the second album, I was in a relationship that it was, it was going extremely well at the time. And so that fed into that album and it was a really romantic kind of album in my opinion. And there was, you know, one of the songs is called a song you can slow dance to, uh, it, it, it because I was in the mood of trying to write, slightly more positive romantic stuff because mm. i like that stuff i you know again i grew yeah. up with cold play right yeah. um now this third album i it was made towards the end of when she and i broke up uh slash kind of over that time so it kind of takes on this quarantine slash breakup album thing so the head spaces are all it's all different but it's but, it, that, but the important point, in my opinion, is that it doesn't need to be a negative headspace. You can be in a positive headspace and be just as inspired. What were, because I used to hit the open mic scene a lot, and uh, what are some that come to mind? I'm just spitballing here now that you've mentioned it. Do you, did, are there some open mics that you went and played consistently? Well, Supermarket was the first one. Yeah. Uh, yeah. And I remember I played two songs. And my legs were shaking so much. I thought <laughs> I, I would you. genuinely fall over. Yeah. Uh, well, it's a big one. Like, like supermarket was a big one, man. Like you, you had to email or, or send in like your, you had to request to play before the night even happened. Like, I think there was like a timing during the day that you sent your name in yes. to that. Then you would show up and, and maybe be selected, I guess. I'm not yeah, sure, but it yeah. was weirdly serious. <laughs> yeah. I don't know. I don't know what other way to say it was weirdly yeah. serious, yeah. but they were welcoming and people there were welcoming. Uh, yeah. And then after that, I went to one in the area that I live still, which is sort of Parkdale Liberty village area. And this one is, in just inside of where Parkdale begins, and it's called the TO Lounge. Okay. Open mic or something. Parkdale open mic or something. And again, super friendly people. Yeah. I went and played once, and then I just kind of wanted to keep finding new places. And the, anyway, long story short, the place I settled on was the Cavern, which is a uh, you know you know the Cavern. Oh yeah, yeah. It's great because you go and then you get off stage and you hear like German accents or yes. Yeah, whatever because it's, it's a hostel because it, it's a hostel it, yeah. it was a really interesting atmosphere the only issue with that is if anybody likes your music their chances are they're going back down to south america or to europe again <laughs> yeah. they're not staying here yeah it's a hostel yeah um you better show up with some merch or some cds to be able to yeah, hang ex off and go exactly. down with. yeah exactly but anyway i would say if there's any kind of open mic where i cut my teeth it was that one because yeah they eventually thought I was decent enough to get me onto a list where they would just call you if there was an open spot in a lineup that needed filling. So that way, and, and that mixed with being prolific enough, kind of, I had a 45 minute set, even if the same peers at my level in terms of getting a career had like a 15 minute set. So I would always end up getting on because I had long enough. Um, that's a huge other piece of advice in my opinion is just like write as much as possible. That's great, man. Now, were you for these songs that are on the, and the country stirred, were you playing any of these at open mics? How long do these songs go back to being written? Had you been workshopping them live at all? Or were a lot of these written over the course of the last year or two? Definitely written over the course of the last year or two. Uh... Which is incredible because it's, it's, to know that though like you were able to pump out that much you know from from a writing standpoint and and then when you listen to it and the people that you brought in to produce it you know they're i'm really curious as to how that came together in your head aside from you being you know a, a musician and an artist and wanting to compose this all together but you worked with some incredible musicians to bring in the lap steel and the fiddle and like mm -hmm. it's just so so to know that you you were able to kind of produce it and put all that stuff together and, and you know over the course of a year or anything like that without workshopping it too much is a pretty incredible feat um i think i benefit from the fact that i've never made an album a different way yeah so do what you work, know i am my own worst critic and i basically my own thing is if I am not interested in the song that I'm writing, probably shouldn't finish it. 
yeah. that alone is the point so yeah. if i every finished song you hear from me passed the test of i cared enough about it to finish it but i just love songwriting so much i even more though i love arranging so when i write a skeleton when i have a chord progression or the song just as chords i love being in that position because then you get to go okay i've got this kind of naked body so to speak what am i going to have them wear that's the fun part you put the identity on it uh after that's great and you had and you talk about self-producing before which i'm sure goes into you know you, you learn so much through that but then on this album you had john critchley who's produced for dan mangan and elliot brood and and i mean that obviously in and of itself brings a whole other level of, of production to this. You were communicating back and forth with him over voice memos and you, you were only in studio once with him. Uh, yeah. I've got a little story about that. which is kind of funny. Yeah. Uh, go ahead. So, so I had some demos. I had like five demos and by demo, I just mean me singing into my iPhone and then I put them together and, and sent them to him. Maybe three of the five songs that I sent ended up not being on the record. But uh, anyway, the, the funny part of the story is I send it to him. We plan to meet at his house because his house is, is the studio is attached to the back of the house, essentially. So he takes me there. He's a very friendly guy. Uh, and we sit down and he goes, so uh, like who, who recommended me or, or what, like, why me? Did you hear Dan Mang and stuff? And I was like, I typed uh, producer into Google <laughs> and you were nearby. <laughs> and the look on his face was just like, but then he, I would have chosen him had I done more research because I don't honestly think that I'm too much like Dan Mangan, but there are enough similarities that I th he would ha be yeah. comfortable dealing with this and the reason i went with him is because i or with any professional is because like i said i don't have the technical know-how yet still um especially to bring in all those elements you know and, and you know, not to say you wouldn't learn over time but i mean when you're bringing in those kinds of components working with somebody like it's just incredible how much easier and how much more you know, it's why you hire these people right it's why you go and you get a producer that's been doing this to do this kind of work for you and you know what the most successful people say? They say, hire someone who's better than you to do the job. Yeah. You know? And so I just, you need to put your ego aside of wanting to see your name next to every single credit, which unfortunately is something that was living in my head. Uh, and just hand it over because ultimately it's going to be a better listener experience. So let's talk a little bit about the release process for this project. And you've released okay. singles uh, prior to this. And um, it, it, what was what was the planning like for you on this? It seems like the question I asked the most is is you know when it came to thinking about the release and leading up to the album, you know mm. did you have a lot of this planned out in terms of you knew this was going to be the single, you knew this was going to be the second single, and then you know releasing artwork. I mean, if you look at your social media, I mean you you do a great job of of being present, but also providing your your listeners and your fans with you know like some of those voice memos that you, you mm -hmm. put out there for people to listen to. So d did you have a timeline, something that you were following to a T that, you know, you, you really kept to in before getting to the release of this album? Um, I, it was my first time. This album was a lot of first times. So this out, this was also my first time using anyone to do PR. Yeah. Uh, and I went with auteur research who, you know, they've worked with many yeah. people that you recognize. Yeah. And, um, they were able to point me in the right direction in terms of scheduling and stuff like that. However, they leave you a ton of freedom in terms of choosing what singles you'd like and et cetera. And to answer your question, did I know immediately if any were going to, were any going to be a single on the dance floor was the only one where I thought, I mean, I thought it was borderline too catchy for me that I was maybe not going to put it on the album. I, I mean, I can't speak for anyone else. I don't know if they think it's super catchy, they being listeners, but to me, it's one of the catchier ones on the album anyway. I'll be honest, you've got quite a few catchy ones on this <laughs> on this album. And, okay. and I find it interesting that, you know, Victor's Bell, you mentioned was not even going to be on this this project. 
but it's it, it i mean in my opinion aside from andy stir near the end of that i mean it's kind of the only song that is really really kind of picks up to a bit of a you know a, a faster bpm if you will you know so it kind of it helps to to break it up a little bit but well there's... that's an example of putting your ego to the side because i yeah. thought nope I'm fucking Mr. Tom York, so I need to only have weird stuff. And if it happens to be catchy, then okay. Now, you, you know, again, just kind of relating back to some of that, the social media and the, and the interacting and, and the engagement. I had a, a great conversation with another Toronto artist, uh, Peach Luffy. Uh, he's put out. Did he yeah. tell you? We live across from each other. I can see his window <laughs> oh, right no now. Way. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, that's hilarious. I yeah. saw that that recent episode came out. But yeah, yeah, yeah. So sorry, it, go ahead. That's okay. No, no, that's that's an amazing connection. I had no idea. It just that the, he he really plays into the audience connection and the fan interaction. Yeah. Um, to and I think and I think it's really really paid off for him. And I really enjoyed what you did. You really, in my opinion, utilized email campaigns and opportunities to get in front of your email list by sending out updates as to how the album was going mm -hmm. and but you also gave opportunities for people to choose your next singles you know to, to say hey you know take a listen w you know what do you think how do you like this i think that's that's brilliant i mean it's it's all about the fans what do they want to hear how was that process and how did that did that go as well as you wanted it to uh well the idea had for... anticipated sorry uh no <laughs> <laughs> um uh but I will continue doing it. And the reason I did it is all of those, all of the promotional ideas that you're referencing are either stuff or the are either ideas that I got from similarly small musicians, but maybe are above me still. And what they did mixed with, I want to do the stuff that I would like to see from the artists that I like. So I loved hearing original demos by bands. So that's why I like the voice notes and putting those out. It makes you feel like there's a bunch of stuff to explore. And I loved diving into discographies. I get, I think that's also maybe the benefit that I have over newer artists. Maybe they have a single that catches fire and that's amazing. But if anybody likes my music, they have three albums to go through. So I knew that going into it and having all of that prior music allows me to almost use it to push the new stuff in a weird way because i can throw on a demo of a past song as the b-side to a new single and that's two reasons to listen to it so i, I had all of these ideas but in, t in terms of if it's scheduled if you're imagining an excel spreadsheet no there was yeah. no excel spreadsheet it was very ad hoc uh but i it was always going to be better than what i'd done for the past album because i'd done nothing Mm -hmm. for the past album yeah uh with that said auteur research uses excel spreadsheets for who <laughs> they help. send out uh yeah. so yeah. i gotta maybe, give them credit well we'll talk to them maybe as like a <laughs> from like a pr standpoint yeah there you go how to, how to get that ready yeah that's that's very cool no and i think that's that's hugely important to know that you know it might not have worked the way you maybe had anticipated at the beginning or, or from, you know, when putting it out, but you know, that's what you want to see. And I think, I think that, and it's just supposed to stay true to yourself and, and true to, you know, yeah. who you are as, as, you know, fluffy as that sounds. Right. But it, but it really is, that's what people connect with. And you, you see that all the time. If you're on LinkedIn, it's like, be yourself. That's people are going to connect to. And you're kind of like, I see that all the time. It's, it's true. It's true. And also you're going to want to continue. Yes. The struggle because you're not faking and struggling, you are at least being yourself and struggling. Mm -hmm. There's not two things that are bringing you down. Yeah. You know, you, you can always tell yourself, that, okay, at least I know based on my own intuition, I think what I'm doing is right. I want to give you, uh, give, give us an opportunity to give a shout out to the album artist, the artwork for, mm -hmm. your, for your album art and right. even for your single stuff, because this is it's just, it's beautiful man this is something you want to put up print off and put up on a wall in I hope so. in your living room so yeah who who was it was this you who was it oh god no 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 <laughs> i, <laughs> I would that's love why to you take... were agreeing with me yeah <laughs> <laughs> no i just i'm very fond of this person so she's originally from sweden so she went back there after university i went to toronto and I just saw as my, as i was starting to record i saw that she was starting to post artwork on 
her Instagram. And although we were never close, uh, it was enough that I could reach out and kind of say, Hey, look, do you want to listen to this music? Do you want to see what you can do for it? And it's been, a, she did the artwork for the last album too. She's re responsible for everything except the first album wow. uh, that you've seen. And yeah, she just has an incredible, she's an incredible way of re uh, taking the line ideas that I've given her, like people in the air in a kind of swirl in a country setting. That's kind of all I'd say to her. And then I get what you see on the album cover. And aside from a little bit of cropping or whatever, it's like all come from her. And she is just, so her name is Felicia Wetterlin. Every single person who has t talked to me about my album mentions the art. That's cool. Yeah, it, it is. It's great. And did she have anything to do with your single art as well for Caught You in the Throat? Or was that, where did some yeah. of that, yeah, all of that? She, she, uh, she made everything. And then all I did was go, hmm, that might look interesting upside down. And I, and it's upside down. Yeah. Uh, that was all I did. And yeah. luckily she indulges my like three year old ideas. <laughs> uh, and she liked the look of it and yeah, yeah so you, you can so you can see if people go look at the artwork now you can kind of flip it and go oh yeah it's like a beach and then a sky kind of thing totally but now it's beach and then sky down and you know it's 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 cool almost has a bit of that dan mangan <laughs> album album art feel from uh one of his his previous albums the irony of <laughs> appearing similar to Dan Mangan is I never listened to Dan Mangan. Okay. Ever. Yeah. He's super cool. I've seen him in interviews and uh, he played what's called Block Party at UBC when I went there. Great. Uh, when I was a student there. And that was really cool to see him. But like outside of that, I'm. Uh, he seems like a great artist. That's just not what I listen to. Yeah. That's, no, that's the cool, funny man. thing. Yeah. yeah. And you also released a uh, cover of a uh, wing song with caught you in the throat, uh, wildlife, just, a, you know, even if you just had a brief insight into what stirred that on, was that because, you know, tack on a song by somebody like Paul McCartney and, and that might bring a little more visibility. What were your, your think was your thinking? No, I honestly wasn't thinking that. Yeah. I, that wasn't lost on me once I was putting it out, but I, yeah. it's not why I covered it. I just really fell in love with that song, partially because most of humanity is familiar with the famous Beatles stuff. It's just, you can't escape it. Everyone kind of knows. Yeah. I had never heard that song until like two years ago. Uh, and it's a great solo song and i liked the idea that first of all if i was going to cover like maybe i'm amazed that's too tall in order oh yeah to do that's huge so i went with wildlife <laughs> where there's basically no expectation right. uh but there's also a little bit of it you know it's the right time to put a song like that out too because it's uh it could certainly be viewed as a climate change kind of song. yeah well you've got a, you've got a sound and you've got uh uh aesthetic to yourself that you know when doing covers or doing something like this you know you can put your own you put your own spin on it you put your own your own sound and uh, your own uh touch on it so it uh, uh it's re really cool to uh to see that come out with it as well i appreciate it i, I thought most of this fell on closed eyes and deaf ears but apparently <laughs> not I, it's nice this is very validating well and <laughs> i, I gotta to tell you yeah no it's it man and and i gotta say you know you caught my attention with what you were doing on social media and then you know being and reaching out you reached out to me as well i mm -hmm. think i think that's how it I happened so. anyways but so. you know i just you know i really really appreciate that and, and and you know i i just enjoy talking and and diving into things with people that are putting a lot of work and effort into, you know, their craft and their art and what it is that, that they love. And, you know, being a musician, I, I'm not, I'm not one. I'm, I mean, I do with this, this podcast, so I have an idea of creating, but mm -hmm. I mean, it can feel like such, you know, depending on the reasons why you're doing it, it can, it can be really tough to move on from project to project. If you're not yielding results, you feel like you're, you're having you, or you want to have, or you, you've set an expectation for, you know, I felt zero pressure because to be frank, up until very recently, I had almost no listeners, and now I have very few listeners. Uh, and that's a nice graduation, but 
it means there was no pressure. You know, I thought I, I just moved on from project to project because I just write songs at a fast pace and I, I won't just put them out just because they're done. They need to all find a family and fit together kind of, um, yeah, because you like, have some songs that were left off of this album, right? Mm -hmm. You have yeah. a song list that were, you know, had songs left off and you have, I'm sure places that you'd like to put it, but uh, is that, I know you have an EP, you're working on an EP to come out this summer, you know, is that where a lot of those are, are going to end up going? Or again, is this, you know, wait and see where it is that these could fit? No, neither are the ones that I wrote for, <laughs> for, uh, or around the time of and the country stirred will they will not be on this ep this ep was like a weird little detour that i just cannot fucking wait to talk about to be honest that's cool. but uh it's uh i wrote it kind of definitely just right in the aftermath of the breakup and over christmas and at the same time i just was at home and i found myself watching like hours of hip-hop evolution on oh, nice uh, on netflix yeah. it's amazing and it's anyone listening or yeah yeah canadian so, made absolutely oh right because it's by banger the guy films who, yes it's exactly banger okay. films yeah and uh yeah shad is a canadian rapper who hosts the yeah. thing so it's okay yeah well it's amazing it is uh, <laughs> and it got me so, i, I kind of liked hip-hop a bit because I was forced to be around it in university. Mm. my The guys that I lived with were, once Kendrick Lamar kind of hit the scene with Good Kid, Mad City, it was over. That dude's voice is all I heard. Yeah. Uh, and I ended up, of course, liking Kendrick Lamar. All this to say, I was influenced by Hip Hop Evolution, and I just thought, you know what, while I've got this album and the country stirred in the tank, and that's going to come out in a few months. I'm going to work on this totally separate thing and scratch this separate itch. I can't wait for people to hear it. It's nothing like "End the Country Stirred." It's not like I rap. I'm not like Logic or something. But right. uh, yeah, it's uh, it's just a totally different playbook. It's like the the skeletons of the songs, or some of the songs aren't acoustic guitar. They are the mellotron or a keyboard or something. Mm. Well, that's perfect. And I think because you know, I think it's important to really take an opportunity to, you know in in your genres step out of them and take a listen to you know where you know some just taking some other inspiration from from different places it's the because easiest it's, music to listen to yeah because i don't want to i'll tell you i'll be honest because i hope people admit this in the future because i know we all feel like this <laughs> um or many of us feel like this you need to have delusion about yourself to want to be a popular musician i think you do like uh and and that's of course embarrassing, but then you need to get over that because you just believe yourself, it, you believe in yourself more than you know that it is embarrassing. Um, and so I would listen to, like I had never heard of Andy Schaff, Schaff. I started listening to it and even though he's this indie darling in Canada and I'm literally no one, uh, I thought this guy sounds way too similar I, it's not I, it's not his fault it's not my fault I just was like frustrated that someone was so in a similar lane now that I've listened to it more first of all I was wrong there are similarities obviously but that unfortunately that knee-jerk anger reaction is what I have uh and I'm working on but <laughs> it means that I tend to listen okay you know what cool I, you know what I've been listening to mostly is like a Spanish radio station in Mexico called Cafe Romantico. And uh, <laughs> I know like some Spanish. I'm better at Spanish than I am at, at French, for example. Okay. And so I know some of it, but it really, really is a relaxing experience to enjoy music, but not ha but you feel like there's zero competition with what you're mm. listening to. Yeah. Uh, and I'm not really a competitive person outside of music yeah yeah <laughs> cool i don't know that's a lot to admit but you know what i think more people feel like it than they're willing to admit i you know what i think you're right man absolutely so you've got a new ep coming out and again you've got the help of a publicist what made you feel like this was the album what made you feel like this was the opportunity to reach out to a publicist is it because you had worked with a producer like john that you know you wanted to put a little bit more uh, yeah, uh, exactly if you're gonna put it. money into it not just time then it's time to really like step up and 
if you have the money, whether it's through a uh, factor or whatever, or if you have the money yourself through savings, like it or not, your music won't be listened to by very many people unless you pay for PR. It's just, there's too much out there. That's good. You know what I mean? There's too much out there. That's good. Whereas I think before there was less competition on the radio because there were less artists that were, there were less artists because you had to have access to recording equipment. You had to go to a studio or whatever. So I'm so happy that everyone can make music themselves. I wouldn't have been able to otherwise. Uh, invest in yourself as an artist because uh, unfortunately people's attention spans are short. Alex, thanks so much for, for taking the time to talk about your album. Thank you. This was great. Looking forward to what you have coming next sounds completely unique and uh your music video rosie is also out so make yes. sure that you go and we'll we'll link to that and uh have everybody watching that alongside uh alongside listening to you talk about the album good awesome all right thanks thank man. you very much man all right take care